Greetings and welcome to the fourth part of the Godot Beginner Platformer tutorial series. In this part, we are going to be covering how to make the player shoot to the left because we stopped off with the player just shooting to the right in the last episode and we are also going to be adding in collectibles. And before we start, I would like to say something. This is something that I should have said in the first part itself, but here it is. What I'm trying to say is that instead of just following the tutorials word by word, I encourage you to actually try and code stuff your own. So watch these videos once or twice and then go back to your editor and start writing down instead of following the tutorial just as it is. This is actually a better way to learn programming and I encourage you to learn it better instead of just copying it from this tutorial. Now that my words of wisdom are over, let's get right into it. To create a system in which the axe can either fly to the left or to the right, we have to first find a way to tell the axe where to move. To do so, we are going to have to create a new global variable called player flipped, which sets to false if the player's sprite character is not flipped and sets to true if the sprite is indeed flipped. This global variable will help us to refer in the axe script and tell the axe to move either to the left or to the right. So go ahead to your global script and write down a new variable. I'm going to name it var player flipped and I'm going to set the initial value to false since initially the player character's sprite is indeed not flipped. Now we are going to have to go back to the player script to set up if it flips or not. So in if input is action pressed right, I'm going to set global.player flipped equals false. Below that, if input is action pressed left, I'm going to write down global.player flipped equals true. And over in the access script, I am first going to set the value of the variable speed that we created at the very beginning. I'm going to erase the 300 from there and give it an unspecified value at the beginning. And in function ready, I'm going to write down if global.player flipped equals false, speed equals 300. Elif global.player flipped equals equals true, speed equals negative 300. You should make sure that this is indeed in your function ready. If it is in your process function or your physics process function, then your axe is going to change direction mid-flight. And if we go ahead and try out a game now, you'll see that the axes are indeed being thrown either to the left or to the right. However, you will encounter a different problem now. That is, if you throw to the left, the axes are being spawned from behind the player. This is because the position 2D node does not change its position according to the player's sprite's flip edge value. To do so, we'll just have to assign the position of the x value for position 2D either to the left or to the right. Currently, the x value is 38.72. So over in the player's script, we are going to write down if input is action pressed right, throw hand dot position dot x equals 38.72 and below that in if input is action pressed left, throw hand dot position dot x equals negative 38.72. Now when you try it out, you'll see that the axes are being spawned perfectly in the positions that you want. So next up, we are going to be creating collectibles. We are going to be creating collectibles using the Area 2D node. The Area 2D is a node that helps you to detect if an object or another area has entered this area. So we'll go ahead and create a new 2D scene, change the type of the node 2D into an Area 2D. Rename the area 2D into whatever you would like, I'm going to be calling it a collectible and then add in the children for the area 2D. The area 2D needs two children, the first one is a collision shape and the other one is a sprite. The sprite is for whatever texture you would like to use, I'm going to be using a coin texture. So now I'm going to drag and drop in a white circle image the texture's property of the sprite. So this is supposed to be a coin, so I'm going to give it a golden color. I'm going to be doing it by modulating the color property of the image. Now that I have a coin, I'm going to be setting the shape for the collision shape. I'm going to be using a circle shape, you can choose whatever suits your sprite. So I'm going to be using the offset value of the sprite a little bit, so I'm going to set it to negative 2 so that the coin is being fully encompassed by the collision shape. And I'm going to hide the collision shape so it doesn't bother me and I'm going to add in a new script. Add it into the scripts folder, call it collectible or whatever you like. Erase everything that comes by default, it's just how you do it from now on. Connect the on body and dot signal to the script and in here we are going to give the player a new group. I'm going to add the player into a group called player. So basically we did this earlier for the enemies. 
So I'm going to create a new group for the player and then refer to the player using its group. So if body dot is in group player, then Q free. However, Q free is a little bit boring, so I'm going to be creating a collect or pickup animation and I'm going to be playing it in the if function. I'm not going to be covering the entire creation of the animation here, it's just setting the modulation of the alpha from full to zero as well as just setting its position of the y value a little bit. So or in the function on collectible body entered, write on animation player dot play pickup and connect the signal called animation finished from the animation player to your collectibles script. Change the animation name to pickup or whatever you have named it and in here you are going to write down whatever you want to happen after the animation player has finished playing. So in this case I want it to go away from the scene so cue free. So or in the main scene select the wall node, select the chain button to append in your coin or collectible and I am going to position it where I want it to be. And I found that it's a little too big for my liking so I'm going to go to the inspector and in the transform I'm going to set the scale value of both the x and y to something like 0.6 which should be the correct value. So or in our world you can set the position to wherever you want it to be and when you play it you're going to be able to see that the coin is indeed being collected just like how a collectible is supposed to be. And that is pretty much how you create a collectible in your platformer game. So this was just a quick little tutorial on how to create collectibles for your platform game. I'm currently a bit busy working on the Godot game jam so I'm not going to be able to upload as frequently as I did. However, I'm going to be coming up with better and juicy tutorials next time. So until then, goodbye.